Yeah, I'm the uh, tech lead for the for the core data infrastructure team. Um, the uh, core data infrastructure team is uh, uh, tries to help other teams within the company to um, adopt big data technologies. And um, first, I'll briefly uh, explain what uh, what IGN is. Maybe uh, some of you have not heard of it. Um, so whenever you do a, a payment, um, either online or uh, in a store, um, yeah, you uh, uh, money needs to be transferred from uh, uh, the issuers to uh, to the merchant, and um, we call our customers merchants. Um, and uh, typically, there are a few processes uh, in place, a few steps, and uh, basically, our uh, uh, proposition is um, that we have one modern platform to do uh, all of these things. Um, we uh, we do this around the world, um, and. Um, uh, yeah, we, we process uh, in, in uh, uh, either through our own uh, acquiring or through our partner acquiring. And so um, our challenge is basically that um, uh, we have these nice uh, uh, applications uh, to process all of these payments. And um, uh, we had a, a, um, a data warehouse um, so our, our, all of our applications are scaling horizontally, uh, but our data warehouse wasn't. And so we said, well, uh, let's, let's fix that. Uh, let's, let's try to build a central data platform uh, where all of these data can be stored, uh, transformed, and then uh, turned into value for, for our customers. And so uh, we built this, uh, this on-premise uh, uh, data platform. Um, uh, basically, uh, we we get some uh, some configuration data uh, from from all the different applications that we uh, that we have running, uh, and then we have uh, all these events uh, mainly related to to the payment flow, uh, and we we stream those into our big data platform, uh, which uh, um, yeah runs on top of Hadoop. Uh, we store all of our data in HDFS. Uh, then we use uh, Apache Spark to to process the data. And uh, obviously, we we orchestrate everything uh, through uh, through Airflow. Um, and um, well, this this platform uh, basically provides uh, our, our payments platform with uh, with three kinds of artifacts. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, there are the machine learning models uh, models that we can put back into the payment flow and then score in in real time. Um, for instance, to to do some optimizations or uh, to uh, to see if uh, if a payment might be fraudulent. Um, the second uh, sort of artifact that we ship are uh, reports uh, to to tell our customers uh, how many payments they processed with us and uh, and how that all went. What are, were the different stages uh, the payments went through? And then um, third of all, uh, we had um, uh, we have insights. So uh, let's say we. Uh, uh, we do some anomaly detection and then uh, figure out whether or not uh, something went, uh, uh, everything went okay. And then, uh, if uh, if there was some uh, some anomaly, uh, we can notify, um, yeah, whoever is interested in that. Um, so we're running our data platform on prem, uh, so we're not in the cloud, um, which uh, yeah gets us some some interesting challenges. Uh, but it's also quite fun to to see how how everything is worked uh, working and. Sort of working with uh, with the people directly to to make this uh, this all happen. Um, so yeah, you might say uh, problem solved. Uh, the data platform is there, so we can do all, all of these things. But um, one of the bottlenecks that we ran into was um, yeah, we have all these precious artifacts that uh, that we computed on our big data platform, um, and then we need to bring them back to our uh, to our applications uh, and to our customers. Um, but uh, yeah, how we did that was not uh, was not let's say ideal. So um, yeah, time to get to business. Um, yeah, uh, we started out with a sort of the naive approach um, uh, by by just treating it as another file processing problem. Uh, and the reason that we did this was that um, we're a payments company, um, so we deal with a lot of external parties. 
Um, and um, so we have all these frameworks in place to deal with uh, sort of files coming in that need to be processed uh, correctly uh, without, uh, without missing any, uh, any file. Uh, so basically, how this process works is that um, on, on Airflow, uh, we have this task that, uh, that writes out a certain file or a, a model uh, to, to some out folder. Um, and then uh, we start a cron job uh, on the application side. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Java applications, typically, that uh, basically would uh, copy the data from, um, from this out folder to an in folder on the, app on the server where the application is running. Um, it would then process all of these files. And then uh, at the end of the process, all of the files would be moved to the out folder. Uh, and then from there, they are copied back to HGFS, to the DON uh, directory. And this way, uh, we sort of we know or we can expect uh, inspect uh, uh, on, on both the, the application servers uh, as well as on, uh, on our Hadoop installation um, where we are in the process and, and what has been transferred and what uh, or tran um, uh, processed and whatnot. So um, this worked quite well, um, but it's, it was far from optimal. So one of the problems that we had is uh, when do we actually start the, the cron jobs? Uh, um, unfortunately, Airflow is not available on the, on the application side, so uh, we can't really make a, a, a direct dependency. Um, uh, second of all, we we're not sure when we are complete. We can obviously we can look in the folder if there are any files to process, but we don't know if that is the the entire result or if we're still waiting on on some of the result. And also, if we look at the folder and we don't find anything, um, then um, yeah, we we don't know where we are stuck uh, in in the process. So we know know something is probably not right, but uh, we don't know. Uh, where the, the fault is. So we ha actually have to go to Airflow to, to check out how the DAC is do, uh, doing. Um, and then uh, last but not least, um, whenever we do an undo, uh, there was a presentation earlier from, uh, from our team about our uh, undo uh, DAC. Um, if, if something went wrong in the process uh, and we want to rerun certain tasks, then how do we actually communicate this uh, back to the applications? How do we sort of signal that uh, you know this is a, this is a task that we did earlier, but uh, this is actually a correction? So this is why we came up with the uh, the Airflow uh, event stream. Uh, it's basically a write a, a had event log for all of the state changes of Airflow tasks. Uh, so um, we have the uh, um, the execution date of the original task, the DAC name, the task name, the state, um, and then uh, some of the, uh, some some other uh, properties. Uh, and we do this for uh, uh, we make this event log for for all state changes of uh, of all Airflow tasks and all DACs that we uh, that we run. Um, then on top of that, we have this uh, this custom push operator, um, where actually uh, this is an operator that it typically comes at the end of the DAG uh, that actually ships the artifacts. Uh, and what it can do is um, it can add extra metadata about uh, what it is shipping. Uh, and then it can either uh, add a payload, which is a, a adjacent directly uh, to this uh, to this message, to this uh, event stream, um, or it can specify a uh, a folder uh, and a list of files um, where uh, that can then be uh, um, uh, used to to retrieve the files uh, in uh, from the application point of view. Now, on the, on the application side, we actually have a, a single consumer uh, per DAC. Um, so that's, that's the current, uh, current pattern. Um, and here, the consumer is responsible for the, for the transport phase. Uh, so whether th that is uh, updating our customer portal, that something is ready, or notifying customers, or simply ingesting the data in, uh, in, in Postgres or, or somewhere else, um, that depends on the, the type of, uh, uh, of DAC. Um, but this is what the, the, the consumer will do. Uh, the consumer is also responsible for storing its state. So basically, it's keeping track of how far it is in reading the queue. Um, and this means that uh, both systems, so both on the application side as well as, as Airflow itself, uh, can go down um, without anyone noticing. Because in the end, it's eventual uh, uh, consistent. 
Um, if uh, if airflow goes down, the consumer just uh, uh, keeps on pulling uh, until it's back up, uh, and then it, it starts processing again. Uh, and the same goes for if the if the consumer goes down, uh, it knows its state, so it just picks up where it left. Um, this also means that uh, we get some sort of free integration with our monitoring tooling. Uh, we have a lot of jobs on the application side already um, running and do, doing all sorts of things, and we have monitoring attached to that. Uh, where basically we keep track of uh, the last thing we did uh, within a specific job. Um, and because now we sort of connect uh, our Airflow DAC to, to one of these consumers, uh, we get a free integration with that monitoring tooling. So if, if anything goes wrong, for instance, in Airflow, um, we, we actually get a, a notification that uh, you know, this, this job didn't process uh, um, something for X amount of hours where we expected it, it would. So I think uh, one of the things that we that we really like about this is that uh, we we really have a separation of concerns. So on the one side, uh, we have the big data platform uh, where Airflow is running, um, where in Airflow in the DAG uh, we keep track of all the dependencies, um, splitting all of the work that we need to do um, in in different tasks and scheduling these. Um, and it's sort of the 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 factory in which the the goodies are produced. And on the uh, other hand, we have a yeah what we call the the airflow consumer on the application sites uh, that that represents the customer that just wants a model or a report or or some insight, um, and it's just uh, yeah waiting uh, uh, to get notified uh, that the goods are there and, and that it should uh, sort of handle uh, the rest of the flow. So how do we build it? Um, well, uh, actually quite simple. Um, we created a new Airflow plugin uh, that exposes the REST API, uh, where we can basically query uh, sort of the Airflow event stream, um, yeah, pending a, a proper event streaming platform that is, that is available on both ends. Um, and then um, uh, we used um, the, the in the push operator. We actually add uh, the the events, and for sort of all the tasks that are not coming from the push operator, um, uh, we use this uh, event listener um, from SQL Alchemy uh, to to intercept uh, any operation or any um, a query that is uh, gets sent to the database. And then we listen in if that is a, a new task that uh, that changes state. Uh, we actually insert uh, one of these event uh, streams. That was it. <laughs>